Located almost on the border with Chirumanzu district, southwest of Chikomba district and close to the eastern border of Kadoma district is an imaging iron and steel works giant, the Dinson Iron and Steel Plant. The towering Manise Mountains and the gigantic Munyati River enclave the site that has been turned into a pivotal and strategic engine for local development. We got a very rich iron mine called the Manise Iron Ranch. It's got a 45 to 55 percent great iron ores, which is uh, reserved 20 to 30 billion tons reserves, which can last for generations. What we did, we're going to mine the iron and smelt the iron into the steel to make the steel bars, as you can, the window frame, door frames, there's the final products. Steel structures, as well as uh, deformed bars, there's the steel products. This is a national project to start with. It belongs to Zimbabwe and for every Zimbabwean. But in terms of its location, it covers the three uh, provinces. We have got Marsh West, where the Manidze itself uh, mountain starts from. And then we have got part of uh, uh, Chivu, uh, where we are going to do our mining and our beneficiation uh, plant. And then we have got Midlands, where we are going to now to do the manufacturing of the iron and steel. The place that used to be a thick forest with scattered village homesteads is now a hive of activity. When I started here, this all this way, it was just a bush. There was nothing here. But as you can see, there is really something going on and in the few years to come, we'll be talking about different things. The iron and steel company that's being established in Chirumanzu will definitely mean that uh, uh, both the upstream and downstream value chains are going to, 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 to improve so much. And there's going to be a lot of circulation of uh, uh, value. The plant has been accorded national project status and is earmarked to turn around the fortunes of the industrial sector and of the nation. Following feasibility studies, exploration, Siting and commencement of construction work on site, the foundational intricacies are a marvel. This is a mega project under government of Zimbabwe's 100-day priority project. It is being implemented under the guidance of Interministerial Committee and is poised to be the largest iron and steel plant in Africa. This is one of the projects which have been identified as a, as a national project and it is the government itself which gave uh, this project a national status. What it means to us, it means that they have seen the importance of the government. It's an asset actually. It's not an investment by the Chinese but it also is an investment of the country itself. The government of Zimbabwe uh, undertook to provide an iron suitable iron ore areas to enable um, uh, Tsingshan to extract the iron ore. Then also the government of Zimbabwe also undertook to facilitate the development of the ferrum capacity of Tsingshan. Then also the government of Zimbabwe undertook to provide the necessary infrastructural support to ensure that the Mamanize Iron Ore Value Edition uh, project takes off. The steel plant completion is 25%. Steel production will commence in 2023. Staff quarters are almost complete to accommodate 700 employees. Footing for the steel plant workshop are almost complete. Office complex is 90% complete. The accommodation side, something has been done for the workers. Uh, accommodation and also management accommodation. You can actually see the Chinese village which will accommodate uh, management. In terms of uh, the plant itself, we, we, we are seeing the furnaces, uh, foundations for the furnaces, the concrete mixer, right, and uh, many other such related uh, uh, smelting uh, projects. Uh, taking off. The iron ore and steel deposits form a huge discovery for Zimbabwe, which results not only in the reduction of steel imports, but 
catapult prospects for employment creation, skills transfer, and community development. Every year, 1.2 million ton, million dollars in uh, imports for the steel products from China, from Turkey. We're going to change the image. Most steel will coming from here, from Zimbabwe, and uh, South Africa, Ethiopia, and uh, some other countries in Africa will use steel from here, from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe will become the key steel maker in Africa. Our phase one project will be 1.2 million tons steel manufacturer plant. For phase two, it's three million tons. Imagine the, the, the size and the tonnage we're making. We're going to make the, the, the Zimbabwe the, the biggest steel maker in Africa region. I benefited a lot from this company, Dinson Iron and Steel. I benefited skills and I benefited some work here which I couldn't do myself. I now know everything. I get experience from these Chinese people. As part of uh, our corporate responsibility, we, we've got a, a lot of youths that have been employed here who assist and are also learning how to weld, even a builders. Every department has got uh, local youths that have been uh, employed here where the, 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 the experts are actually imparting skills to them. Well, the, the idea is that eventually we win uh, our foreign engineers that we have and up, end up having our own children running most of these departments. The plant is testimony to the fruition of the 2018 landmark investment agreement between the governments of Zimbabwe and China to the tune of 1.5 billion United States dollars. The agreement seeks, among other notables, to value add iron ore and produce iron and steel to beneficiate mineral resources, to achieve stainless steel ecosystem, export and revenue generation, and in the long run, contribute to the 12 billion United States dollars mining vision. The onset of the Second Republic, when His Excellency visited China, he met the major shareholder and you know representative of Tsingshan uh, to discuss the you know integrated mining and value addition project uh, that was uh, in 20, uh, 2018 and um, on his return the process to um, put together a framework for this development and invest investment work started taking place. And this culminated in the signing of an MOU between Tsingshan and the government of Zimbabwe. This project is in a number of phases. The first phase is 600,000 ton uh, carbon steel plant or steel plant uh, where they will produce various grades of steel. The 600,000 uh, tons per annum, working on an average uh, price of 1,000 US dollars per ton in terms of the import substitution price and also in terms of the export price, which means it's a 600 million US dollar project. If we look at the 12 billion, Manize is under uh, chrome and steel. The target there was or is 1 billion it would be well surpassed with the work which is also taking place in terms of the ferrochrome industry, which is expanding very significantly. We are following the China's policy, one seek, one road policy, to investment in other countries. The advantage and uh, the, uh, our good thing is, is our 10th year or 12th year from first time we come to Zimbabwe. We know Zimbabwe. We know the environment. We like the working environment, like the people we work with, and investment run, that's why we're putting so many projects here. Construction work at Manize has started. The massive structure is interwoven, each facet dovetailing to another, building up step by step to form a gigantic and majestic plant for iron and steel production. Production is set to start in 2023 according to the set timelines and targets. The cement mixing plant is now operational and has a capacity of producing 60 cubic meters per hour. This is the concrete mixer plant. 
we use the concrete to the foundation, and this is the plant. We use the raw material, the river sand, the quarry there. We put it in these vessels. One is river sand, two is quarry. We use the belt to transfer to that tank and load to the top of the, the mixer. You can see the grave one, that's the mixer. We put all the raw material, the cement, river sand and quarry into that machine. They mix it. Less than 30 seconds, it will be done. And load to the truck. And the truck go wherever we need the cement, the, the concrete. And this is a big one. We can produce a concrete for 16 square meter per hour. That's a good one. Now it's easy. We uh, building all the foundation. In the old time, we didn't build this, didn't finish this plant. We use a small mixer to do that. Every day, maybe only have uh, 50, 50 square meters per day. But now this one. A 60 square meter per hour. Use this one, this truck to load all the concrete to everywhere. It's much, uh, it's very convenient. Uh, in the old time, we, we need to relocate it, reset all the mixer. Use the, the crane, the uh, uh, timber to remove this, move the mixer whenever we need. But now it's very fast. This is the, we control all these machines. This is the raw material tank for river sand and the quarry. And this is for the cement. And this is the mixture. It's a simple process. We just control this uh, device by this computer to make sure all, every, 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 so the, uh, the quality of the cement is stable. In the future, we will have our own lab, own lab over here. We can test all the uh, uh, concrete for the quality. We just start the brick factory, and uh, we can make the cement brick like 8,000 per day. 8,000 bricks per, per day. Yes, and it's going to be used uh, to build all, all the walls and other stuff. The huge factory workshop forms a center for value addition, technological innovation and skills transfer. Where we are and what you see is the construction of uh, a very big workshop for the company, for the site, where we are going to have all mechanical activities taking place, repair works and some storages. This is a very big workshop which is uh, uh, with the extent of 175 meters by 100. Uh, such a very big workshop. It's a very strong building that is going to come out. The foundation itself is seven meters deep and concretized that depth. And we are using uh, very huge uh, poles which are, which are made of steel. Uh, we anticipate that uh, the finishing of this uh, workshop will be around the end of September. This workshop is going to, to be used for all the work that is here. Uh, everything that wants to be repaired and so forth is going to be used here. The steel plant has a solid steel foundation from the underground to its footing. We are doing uh, uh, civil work. Civil work. We, now the workers is uh, installing the riba and then installing the formwork. This, this building is uh, in the foundation of the blasted furnace. And now we do the civil work, and then, and then uh, maybe two two months later, we we will to install a steel structure on the equipment. The materials is from the mining, from the storage, storage and transfer to the settling. They are in the settling, settling make the make it make it and either together, together then transfer to this onco, onco then making a different material to mix it together transfer to the, to the blasted furnace. And the blasted furnace is a high temperature, can, can, can make some uh, uh, waste. So it's going out to the uh, chimney. The chimney is uh, put on a waste gas go out. And we have some um, environment uh, protection uh, method, like uh, uh, dust removal, a lot of dust removal to, to make the uh, 
environment to protect the environment. Uh, this is the 3.5 meters down, and the up, upside is uh, 60 meters high in you know, the steel structure. Chimney is uh, 60 meters chimney, 60. The downside is a minus uh, uh, 5.2 meters the chimney, yes. And then the deepest is here, on cool, it's minus 10 meters deep. Uh, height is uh, not so high, it's 20 meters high. This structure is very heavy. Upside is a high load. So instead of uh, including a steel structure and the mudding inside, so making the foundation need, need a very big foundation to support the uh, structure. The integrated iron and steel project that comprises a steel plant, an iron ore mine, and a ferrochrome plant is poised to produce 1,2 million metric tons in the first phase and subsequently 6 million metric tons when complete annually. Denson Iron and Steel Plant is a major source of employment for both direct employees of Qingshan Group Holdings and all service sectors that gravitate around the new industrial center. At full capacity, the production plant and the mining site will employ at least 6,000 people. At this point, we are mainly focused on construction and preparation for, for the construction work. And... Um, we are looking at, at great opportunities in employment creation. At the moment, we have jobs. Uh, we have employees, a staff, com staff complement of about 450 employees, and we are looking at about 500 employees by the end of this, uh, of this month. So these jobs mainly include builders, work in the construction industry, which is builders, electricians, uh, technicians, welders, and also at the same time we've got people who operate earth moving machines, which include um, excavators, dump trucks, and also loaders and even heavy lifting equipment. This is a great opportunity for the country of Zimbabwe, as at the moment, if we look at the demographics of this organization, uh, the population here is, we, are, we have uh, different age groups for obviously for obvious reasons but we mainly employ the youth which is from 18 years to up to the age of 40 this is our this is our main target group so we are getting employ employees from across the country but the local communities are, are benefiting are benefiting as much or the greater percentage of that <laughs> Right <laughs> 600 workers on site as at July 2022, 40 expatriates, 1,000 plus workers on site by end of August 2022. 80% of the employees are locals, skilled, unskilled, and semi-skilled. Power line to employ 300 people. Job creation has been done here. Also, it's not for the community around Manise, no but for the whole country of Zimbabwe. Most of the youth are now, are now not doing drugs. They are now not stealing in the community because of this job, job creation. So it benefited a lot to the youth. Dinson Iron and Steel Company, DISCO, and the Zimbabwe Electricity Transmission and Distribution Company signed a joint venture agreement for the construction of a 330 kilovolt 100 kilometer transmission power line from Sherwood, Kwekwe, to Manize. The deal to construct a power line has since been operationalized with ZETDC and the contractor agreeing on the time frame of the project. This will facilitate the efficient operation of the enormous steel plant. We are going to uh, fire the first blast furnace in next year, in September. Why September? Because I think our power line, which we are going to construct from Kwekwe, 
to Manize, where we are today, is going to uh, actually take about 15 months. And 15 months from here, I think it's October. And uh, obviously, we are going to co commission it in September. Dinson Ion and Steel Company settled for Tabian Electric Apparatus Stock Company Limited, a renowned Chinese manufacturer of transformers and other electrical equipment, as the contractor to superintend over the construction of the power line. Construction work of the 27 kilometer stretch that links Manize to the Arare Mashingo Highway has commenced. The scope of the roadworks include graveling and tarring, the construction of the bridge that crosses Munyati River, which was impossible during the rainy season. These form part of the many benefits from the establishment of the Manize steel plant. <laughs> My improvements are quite a bridge was the Vagato, Vagrosha Foundation, Bridge Raj Baru Zibabu, Vura, Rutan, the Onoxide, Quayo, Yogashanta, Quao, Saga, is a sweet gum from the middle to the Fari. The Kunoku Rufara and Zira Zavakati Gazira, Tangati, one of Vash Tambra Shakanyanisa, Tichipinta and Zuma Road, the ends of the board, Asiri Road, in which I got to my China, Scattered Rufara, could transport it out to one hour, Taku no name, machine attaching as you could, Taku you owner, Neguti, Vakakos to Gazira Road, Tirufara, the singer, it is nowhere to Gazira Bridge, Tukun, Okfara, Tufari, Sisas, the singer to Boit, Kutiva Nakaya, Vakati Goni, Ravakuti, to go no farm, the Zagana, never have you do over. Steel business is the key business or booster business for the economy. And uh, by the time we finish the plant, uh, not only the steel making, the transport upstream and downstream will be also a good business. For example, new roads are coming. We're expecting 200 trucks coming in and out every day. The spin-offs of the construction work include connectivity, telecommunication infrastructure, establishment of a new town, a dam on Munyati River, a steel industrial park, an electricity substation, and a railway project all set to link the steel value chain upstream and downstream. For us to uh, transport uh, iron uh, and steel, it's a bulk commodity and we need railway. And we've got plans to actually construct a railroad line uh, as a, a low-hanging foot from here to, to, to Mvuma, and then Mvuma to Gweru, Gweru to Rutenga, and then Rutenga to Mozambique. That is our first uh, railroad line which we are going to uh, try to upgrade and build. But in the long run, we are planning to just build a railroad line from here, uh, Arare, Mutare, and uh, Baira. This is the shortest distance. So we have also plans for that, and we have got investment which we are going to put. Kanzi laga tu za gaga tizo ni kuya kuruita town ni susu ticha piwa mastien zim town diyo. Saka ya advantage kwa tir ni kungi tika piwa karuseva katiro piwa ni kuva kiroa. The development has excited villagers, some of whom are already finding it easier to link with the market for their fresh produce. <laughs> Mera ne uti ndoro no ita mukati me ku me chando. Taka rima twenty thousand plants. Mera no ya wakuzotenga wachi farmba. Marodi edu ndoa anga kati shate ita tiki kumbiro kutiwa gadziriwe marodi waone kufamba zaka naka. Shuti batiro pa kuana maketi zaka sununguka. The establishment of the Dinson Iron and Steel Plant has affected a number of villages who have since been relocated and houses built for them. Atakasumuzwa munzimbo ye yatatiri ku munyika vano kukwaedza village tichiwiswa kuno kumanyu lens kurusununguko. 
Takavakirwa zvakanaka tukona zvichiti fadza zvakanyanya kuvhurika kwataita nekuvakirwa iko kwataita takati gara kunonzi kukwaedza kumagada kuze kuna munyati ndokwatakati gara saka a takasimudzwa mune zvakanaka zvedu tikavati kagadzikwa kuno nekuvakirwa uko kwatakaita uko a kwakati fadza zvakanyanya nekuti sati vanhu vakadzikirawo takasimudzirwa pane chikamu chatati munhu wedu watati nawo Chuiswa kuno kuma new stands. Easter ka viswa kwa kaiswa dingso steel plant. Ndo patai gara. Taka move wafu. Kuvaipapo this year muna January. Tichuiswa kuno kwa. Tino appreciate asha. Taka itura taka wakiru. Atidi kunyepa. Taka wakiru wa zimbaza ka simba. Mafo roomsi. Makicheni. Mabati ni matoilets. Atinga shori paka daru. Shunja kanaka shwa wakati itira. In the long run, the establishment of this iron and steel plant will result in the reduction of Zimbabwe's steel imports. Due to the closure of the Zimbabwe Iron and Steel Company, Zisco, in 2008, the country has been importing steel worth 400 million United States dollars. The demand for steel and steel products has increased due to the boom in the construction sector and the focus on infrastructure development and rehabilitation has been the trademark of the Second Republic. The 600 million yeah. is the net impact on foreign currency because it saves on the uh, import substitution and what is not used locally is exported. So the net effect in terms of our foreign currency reserves will be 600 million. The recognition of the essential role that foreign direct investment plays in advancing Zimbabwe's development agenda is crucial in permitting the inflow of capital modern technology and know-how and creating jobs for Zimbabweans. Government of Zimbabwe through public-private partnerships, built operate transfer facilities and foreign direct investment among other investment opportunities has shown commitment to the ease of doing business. The favorable investment climate provides an enabling operating environment for mega investments which are key to the attainment of Vision 2030.